Hi everyone and welcome back to Nathra and Deer's Guide to Everything. My name is Nathan, I'm the host, this is my channel, welcome all. Um, today we're going to be sort of a continuation from my beginner's guide to creating an artificer. Uh, this is kind of part two, we're going to look a little bit at one of the subclasses, the armorer specifically, because that's the one that in kind of intrigues me the most. Um, and we're going to look at what that looks like, what leveling up an artificer looks like. So let's go straight over to D&D Beyond and get into it. So here we are back in the window and we're going to go straight to my characters, uh, which will be where yours are as well. Uh, we're going to go to Crewmore. Uh, I've got a few more there, but uh, this is the only one we need to worry about for now. So this is Crewmore. This was my rock gnome artificer, um, level one. Um, and just for a quick reminder, hopefully you guys have studied your character sheet a little bit so you know where a few things are. Um, we've still got the same spells as last time, I haven't changed anything. Um, so what we're going to do, um, let's say you've play, been playing this character for a while um, and you've reached level 3. That's where we're going to go to today because that gets you your subclass, which allows you to customise your artificer even further. So we're going to click go to builder, this little hammer and anvil in the top right and we will change our level to level three instead. We get a few new things. So one thing we would have missed at level two is this infuse item. And that's quite a big block of text. In short, basically, it allows you to infuse a mundane or a minor object of any kind and infuse it with um, an artificer infusion. Um, and we'll have a look at those in a minute. Um, I believe at this level you can pick four to be able to learn um, and you learn additional infusions as you level up. Um, and so as a summary, whenever you finish a long rest, you can touch a non-magical object and imbue it with one of your artifice infusions, turning it into a magic item. An infusion only works on certain kinds of objects as specified in the infusions description. If the item requires attunement, you can attune yourself to it in the instant you infuse the item. If you decide to attune to the item later, you must do so doing the normal process for attunement. Now, attunement is probably a new phrase for you guys, you uh, beginners. And attunement is something that relates specifically to magical items. So let's say I find a sword, a flame tongue long sword that can light on fire out in the world. Um, you have to spend some time with that item while your character unlocks its magical abilities. And you have three attunement slots as standard. Um, artificers get a few more, but that's again for later. Most other characters, in fact, all of the classes in the game have three attunement slots. There are magic items that don't require attunement. They're generally their effects are lesser than one that would. Infusions. Let's have a look. Artificer infusions. So there's plenty of descriptions, loads of descriptions of all of these things here. Um, I'm just going to minimize that for now and we're just going to take a look at the choices we have just here. So a level 2 option, let's go for Mind Sharpener. I think that's pretty good. So when the creature fails a constitution saving throw to maintain concentration on a spell, it can use its reaction to succeed instead. So Mind Sharpener is fantastic on any spellcaster that's concentrating on a spell. So you could use this if you're concentrating or you could hand it to your wizard, your sorcerer, your warlock, whoever else is concentrating on a spell because you can give these things out. So let's go and have a look in more detail at Mind Sharpener. So the item that you have to use Mind Sharpener on has to be a suit of armor or robes. The infused item can send a jolt to the wearer to refocus their mind. It has four charges and has the effect that I mentioned earlier with regards to maintaining concentration on a spell. Great first one to have, I really like the sound of that. So let's go with that. Um, then we'll probably go for Replicate Magic Item. This one's my favourite. Because basically you can choose uh, common and uncommon magic items in the game, you can just make a copy of it as one of your infusions. Crazy! So you don't have to buy it or scour the world for one specific thing you're after. You can just have, you can make it for yourself or have your artificer in your party make it for you. As you can see, there's a few things. Um, so I'm just going to go with something that's come up quite a lot in my home games, and that is Goggles of Night. Now, Goggles of Night are, um, it's a magic item that allows, uh, gives 
a character dark vision. So there's a couple of humans in one of my games and they, they can't see in the dark. This is a way around that. A fantastic use of an infusion. And remember, these aren't permanent. You can change these on a short or long rest. So um, it's really, really handy for just switching in and out. And you can adapt to situations. So let's go another Replicate Magic item. Um, and let's see if I can just find something off the cuff here that would be cool. Awesome, yeah. So let's look at a lantern of tracking. Now, uh, if you have a... Let's say you get a mission to uh, find the source of some undead uh, creatures, uh, a crypt, or you're tracking something that you know to be undead, or you're tracking a dragon, perhaps. Um, you can find a lantern of tracking. We'll go lantern of tracking for dragons. And now specifically, I'll probably bring the full description up on screen now. So, a uh, lantern of tracking reads, uh, this hooded lantern burns for six hours on one pint of oil, shedding a bright light in a 30 foot radius and a dim light for an additional 30 feet. It's designed to track down a certain type of creature, which is determined by what you find on the lantern. Um, and while it is within 300 feet of any creature of that type, its flame will turn a bright green. So if you're looking for a specific target, this is fantastic as well. Let's move on to the fourth item or fourth infusion I should say okay so for our final infusion I think we're gonna just increase our AC um, our armor class and we're gonna go for enhanced defense um, so this gives you a plus one to your armor class while wearing an armor or shield infused with this so you're probably gonna have a shield um, as an artificer because your health pool isn't massive um, so a shield will help you with your survivability and um, it's an easy bonus you can add another plus one to that so it will be really tanky so now the level three abilities level two was item infusion and we've just discussed that um, so what we'll do is remove that and we'll look at third level now this is where you get your specialist ability this is where you can pick exactly how you want your artificer to play now I already mentioned uh, that I really like the sound of armor it's got that Iron Man feel to it um, so that's what we're gonna go with today if you want me to make another video on the other ones please leave a comment down below and we'll make a new character and go through the whole thing in detail um, but for now let's go with armor you can see now even more things below us Every artificer gets the right tool for the job. You can produce tools magically for whatever you need. Um, you just need an hour of work, basically. So nice and easily, you can just, again, it's the ultimate, uh, what's the word? Um, it's adaptable. You, you can be ready for almost any situation as an artificer, or if you have one in your party, they can gear you up. Um, so let's look at tools of the trade, which is something we get from becoming an armorer. Uh, we gain proficiency with heavy armor, which is fantastic. It means we can don full plate, get the highest AC possible, so we'll be unkillable. Um, we also gain proficiency with smith tools if we didn't have it already. Uh, we do, so we can choose whatever we like. You know what? I think what we're going to do, I like the idea of being good at making beer. That's one of my favorite pastimes in real life. I think in the spare time we'd be a brewer as well. Let's go with that. That's fun. Um, so that's more of a flavor thing than anything else. Brewer supplies often aren't that useful, but they can be brewing ale and foods and stews and all these kind of things. Um, but we also get armor of spells. So we're at third level. So these are the ones that don't make a difference for now, but we get magic missile and thunder wave, uh, both inclined towards being more of a blaster type. So pound things from a distance with, you know, casting spells and uh, whatever it might be i see i would see magic missiles as um that kind of shoulder attachment on iron man's armor where the little uh, little opening comes up and there's like 10 missiles in there and they all all out at once something like that that's how i would flavor that kind of spell uh thunder wave maybe there's a blast comes from a crystal in the center of your chest something like that that could be really cool uh, but those are the ones we get level th arcane armor the primary feature of having this new armor is this feature arcane armor so rather than just wearing armor and having it be a little bit magical the whole thing becomes a conduit for your magic as an action you can turn the armor you're wearing into arcane armor providing you have smith's tools if it normally requires strength 
get rid of that doesn't matter anymore we can wear it regardless so you can have as low strength as you like and still wear the heaviest armor in the game um you can also use it as a spell cast in focus so i imagine this with like runes all over it and this is how you channel your abilities and how as an iron man i can shoot things now from the palm of my hand um it also attaches and detaches from you at will and the coolest bit and very tony stark uh, you can detract or deploy the helmet, so kind of face mask almost, as a bonus action. So you can reveal your face from under this mech suit that you're in. It goes a little bit further with the next feature, which is armor model. Now this, you can choose two models. I imagine they'll add more to this in the future because it's awesome. Uh, but we can pick from Guardian or Infiltrator, and they both do slightly different things. Each mode includes a special weapon. With Guardian, that's Thunder Gauntlet, so you punch things with with punch the mic, sorry. You punch things with lightning and infiltrated you get kind of a ranged attack. And uh, let's just choose Guardian first. Um you can change this by the way on a short or long rest. So you again, super adaptable. So we get Thunder Gauntlets. So each of the gauntlets now counts as a melee weapon as long as you're not holding anything in it. And they deal 1d8 thunder damage on a hit, which is a not very often resisted damage type, so that's fantastic. And a creature hit by that has a disadvantage on their next attack roll against targets other than you. So this is, you run in, you take all the aggro, and you start punching stuff, and if people don't attack you, they're at a disadvantage. You also get defensive field. As a bonus action, you can gain temporary hit points equal to your level in this class replacing any temporary hit points you already have. You lose them if you take off the armor, and you can use this bonus action a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. So at this level, um, you would be able, to, you would gain three hit points, um, and your proficiency bonus is two, I think, at this level, I might be wrong there. So you could use it twice a day and gain an extra three hit points. So if you're taking all the hits, you're gonna need those. Let's take a look at Infiltrator. On the other side of it, as opposed to going for a melee brawler type, you can go for a typical kind of gliding around the back uh, blaster type of character with Infiltrator. So you get a lightning launcher and it makes you more of a blaster so you can keep your distance a little bit. Um, a gem-like node appears on one of your armored fists or on your chest, your choice. And this is, this has to be Iron Man inspired, like it's, so obviously it. Um, it counts as a simple range weapon with a normal range of 90 feet and a long range of 300 feet. So most engagements will be within that unless you're shooting dragons out the sky kind of thing. So that's a fantastic range. It also deals lightning damage, which more things are resistant to than thunder, but it's still great that it's not just bludgeoning, slashing or piercing damage like from a weapon. Uh, so it's more versatile. And when you hit something, it deals one extra damage die once per turn. So that first thing you hit is 2d6 lightning damage, which is fantastic. You're a little bit faster in this mode as well. Your walking speed increases by 5 feet. Doesn't sound like a lot, but for a rock gnome with 25 feet, this takes you up to 30, which is kind of like most other classes in the game. And you also have dampening field. Your advantage on dexterity brackets stealth checks um, if the armor normally imposes disadvantage on such checks the advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out so this is the same with most things in the game if you have advantage on something from one buff and disadvantage from another they just cancel out and you just roll once instead um, so in the case of Krumor, my character here uh, you'll probably remember we equipped some scale mail which is this rattly heavy chain armor which gave us disadvantage on stealth checks that no longer matters anymore this gets us away from that we can just roll normal stealth checks while still wearing the heaviest armor we can possibly afford at this level so that's it that is armorer so now what we're going to do is skip all the way back to our character sheet over here and now we're back on our character sheet and a few things will have changed um now that you have all these new abilities you can see there's a few more things been added to our actions in the center here. So we have the Infiltrator Armor Lightning Launcher, because um, that's the mode that we're in right now. Um, we can create armor, obviously we've got it here, which we've already done in our minds. Um, magical Tinkering is there. And now we can see our 
item infusions at the bottom there. So now we're going to look at maybe some adding some more spells because we're a higher level now. So we'll be able to add a few more things. Um, let's have a look how many we can add. So we're allowed to actually now learn one more first level spell. So let's look at what we want that to be. I reckon fitting with our kind of character vibes, I think something cool like Expeditious Retreat would be great. Um, so I've got a good knowledge of the spells because I've played for a few years now. Um, and it will come for you, um, but just take a look at all of these. They're all fantastic. Uh, they all, they're all viable in some capacity, whether it's utility or um, for combat. So um, Expeditious Retreat is a concentration spell. Um, it means we can move at an incredible pace. When you cast this spell, and then as a bonus action on each of our turns, until the spell ends, you can take the dash action. So as a bonus action, I can choose to move my full movement again as opposed to spending my turn doing that. So it just means you can get in or out of bad situations. Okay, so once we're done with our spells, and um, we can move over to features and traits again and just remind ourselves of what our infusions were. Um, so uh, we were allowed to infuse two mundane items and make them magical. Um, so we need to first kind of take a look at our equipment. So we're going to go to our equipment in the little tab here on the right. We'll scroll down. You can see our attunement slots here. We have one, two, three available. And you can see our infusions, a summary here. So uh, we chose Mind Sharpener, um, replicating a magic item goggles of night, and the Lantern of Tracking, and the Enhanced Defense buff. Um, so first of all, we're going to want this uh, automatic succeed on a concentration check. And concentration checks briefly for all you spell would-be spellcasters out there. You're going to be using them a lot. If I say cast Expeditious Retreat, and I will show you quickly here. Expeditious Retreat has this little C icon just here. And that means it's a concentration spell. Which means when we cast it, it stays up for as long as we concentrate on it. Uh, up to 10 minutes, as the spell mentions there. Now, maintaining concentration on something can be difficult if you're in combat. Because if you get hit by something or you take damage... Um, your DM will ask you to roll a constitution saving throw, which is this guy just here. Um, and depending on the amount of damage you take and what you roll, you may get hit and you just lose concentration because you took too much damage. But with this mind sharpener ability, we can just choose to succeed even if we fail, which is crazy powerful. Crazy, crazy powerful. Um, and bear in mind, you can give this to someone else in your party. So... Even if it's not super handy for you, you can give it to your your wizard who's permanently concentrating on walls of fire or whatever it might be. So we're going to choose our scale mail for now because we want it, of course. We're going to create the infusion because we have scale mail in our inventory already. We can do this. And there you go. That's one infusion created. Um, so now if we kind of scroll up and go to our scale mail, which is here in our inventory, you can see now it has charges we can expend these as necessary when we decide to use that ability. Fantastic. So there's one infusion done. And that should have updated for us. Uh, it doesn't do it automatically, so you will have to tap that yourself, just so you know within yourself that you've done that. We'll go back to equipment. And the second thing we're going to want is to enhance our armor class. And bear in mind, once again, I can't stress, as an artificer, you are there to buff yourself and your party. So don't keep everything to yourself. You can help other other characters out with their weaknesses. So um, don't forget that. If, for example, the goggles of night to help someone that can't see in the dark. So enhanced defense. We need armor or a shield to be able to do this. We've already infused our armor with the mind sharpener ability. So we're better with our spells. So we're gonna need a shield. So by level three, Let's say we've defeated a few enemies, we would probably have a shield. Um, so if you want to add something to your inventory, you can go to Manage Equipment, and then just Filter, Shield. And you can see it will come up with a load of things of all different rarities. Obviously, there's no need to cheat or anything or spoil any cool magic items for yourself, but feel free to read through them if you like. I would say at level 3 we'll probably just have a basic shield, which is this one here. So we'll add that to our inventory. 
and obviously you can just buy these as well. They're 10 gold pieces as standard. They may be more or less in the world depending on the economy and all these crazy things that your dungeon master will decide. Um, but if I click equip on the shield, you can see my armor class has gone up to 17 as well. So we're already getting quite high at the AC. You'll find that, I mean, 20 is amazing. Wizards, for the most part of campaigns, have to deal with AC around like 13, 14, somewhere like that. So they can be really vulnerable. Um, so this early on in the game, 17 is fantastic. And then we'll scroll down on our equipment and we'll look to enhance that shield. We'll make it magical ourselves because it's not already. So we have to choose an item. You can see it gives you the ones that are relevant to you. We hit choose, create infusion. And there it is, done. And you can see our armor class straight away went up to 18. So that's another point onto our armor class. Incredible. And you can see the shield now should say, there you go, infusion, enhanced defense. So everything just talks to each other. Everything is straightforward and we are in. That's it. So our walking speed is now 30 feet because of our lovely infiltrator armor. We can shoot things from a distance with this node on our hand. Um, and if we change over now to the guardian arcane armor, let's say we've just had a sleep, go to arcane armor. Oh, sorry, no, armor model. Let's change that to guardian. Now we can punch things better and be more defensive and gain health. We'll go back to our character sheet, edit it as quickly as that. You can see now this has been replaced with the thunder gauntlets instead of the nodes to shoot from. Okay guys, so that is basically it. This is what an artificer uh, somewhat sort of optimized build might look like. Um, functional nonetheless. Level 3, you have your subclass. You now have a few things you can do. You can change armor at will. You've got a cool looking helmet. And that's it. You can shoot lightning from your hands. I mean, what, what more do you want? Uh, hopefully this was helpful, a little guide around uh, the D&D Beyond user interface as well. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Any questions, statements, comments, if you liked it, obviously leave a like, comment with any questions you have. Um, I'll be happy to answer them in a future video or just in the comment section. This has been Nathrin Deer's guide to everything, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.